Good morning. 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 All right. I'm used to being in the crowd. And uh, uh, Gianni told me to watch the light, so I talked to the light. Um, yes, uh, my wife and I have owned beauty schools for more than 17 years, and it will be 18 in February, and we're excited um, to be here. Uh, my wife and I also were uh, co creators of the Prestige software. And the idea that software could be enable us to run the business better. And um, we're here because we want to share it. We're here because we want to see users use it, or we want to see the feedback. And as Paul said, our vision is to help students. Right? And so I have, uh, Paul said, change. Well, I find that change occurs at the end of our comfort zone. And I think a lot of us got here either uncomfortable because we were unhappy or we were uncomfortable because we had technology we had to learn. And I recall that I knew that who the technology person was in my household when I was a kid was who could get the VCR to stop playing. Right? Okay. Now, we want the damn computer to update, right? And now, if you're using the software, you open a ticket, right? And I know that all of you write your tickets the same way that I do, I pray to God, because I'm grounded in my, my spirituality is part of who I am. And my ticket is kind of like, inhale, Robert, keeper of the code, Head of the programming, master of the keyboard. <laughs> right here, report. <laughs> well, God definitely has helpers in the room, right? And for some of you, that might be too high, some of you might be beneath, some of you might be high, some of you might be very, and that's who we are, you know, and, and then it's to reach out and, and get that. For me personally, you know, I found that change occurred at the end of my comfort zone. I do a lot of things outside of work and the relationship. I train for things like an Ironman race, a swim, bike, run race. I train for things like marathons. I train for things that are longer than a marathon, like say a hundred miles. Or you might run 100 miles in a day. It's doable. It's doable. If you want to find God, run 100 miles. You will find God. He's out in the middle of the woods at 2 a.m. when you're exhausted and you have nothing left. And you pray that prayer of despair. God, please get me to the next aid station. Right? And I have found that I get through that if I bring my friends along. My friend Dave has been there catching me on my knees more times than I can count and inspired me to go on. Like, you know you can go further. And I'm like, I can't, I just need a nap for like eight hours. It's not okay because the time keeps running. But somehow, somehow I've been able to complete eight 100 mile races through the woods, through the mountains, and I've learned a lot about myself. I've learned that if you strip away your ego, you strip away who you think you are, you strip away who other people think you are, and you get to that point where you can look in the mirror and the person looking back at you is the same person. And that is a monumental point. When that occurs, that's the end of my comfort zone. And that's when my change happens. That's when my growth occurs. For some of you here, that's the end of the keyboard. And today it is the end of the keyboard. You're, you want to take that. If we could throw computers, we all would, right? If we could get an answer faster, we all would. That is our challenge. Um, I have to tell you, that one of my lifetime goals, and I've been doing Ironman for, it's, again, a swim, bike, run race. 
small. You swim for about 1.2 miles which I never understood how people could define swimming in mileage, but you swim for 1.2 miles, bike for 56, and run for 13. So for a very long time, I competed and competed and competed because I used to be a college football player. My image was one of strength, and my wife might say a very large ego. She was glad it was a big room, um, so I would fit. But... Eventually, I wanted to get back into competing. Some time ago, uh, at a previous job, before we owned schools, I was in an industrial accident, and I lost most of my left hand. And uh, what's amazing to me is that I met many of you in this room, and it's not noticeable. And I tell you that because sometimes we don't understand when we pray for things to be healed, God can also have everyone in this room see my hand is healed and not notice that it's being broken. And that's a gift, that's a gift. But I have sort of a little club hand and I defined myself as that. And so when I couldn't swim, I just always went, well, you, you have a disability, you can't swim, you can't swim until I met my friend Hector, who beat me in a 1.2 mile swim, and Hector has no arms. True story, true story. I tackled him when we got to the beach. I let him know. We became very good friends, and truth is he's got about half of a left arm. He was an electrical lineman and both of his arms got, got shot off in a, in, in a bad accident. But he taught me that that the disability isn't what defines me, but who I am defines me. And again, I was challenged at the end of my comfort zone. Last year during COVID, I think we were all challenged. How do we stay in business? How do we achieve our educational goals? How do we achieve our management goals? How do we keep our teams connected? How do we keep our students connected? And I thought it was a big challenge but my wife and I together as a team, we worked on it. As an Ironman triathlete, I was very, very blessed because they canceled all the races. Now I say that tongue in cheek, but honestly, they wanted to go to a virtual format. So how do you swim, bike, run in a virtual format? They replaced the swim with the run. Guess what? I'm really good in the run. I'm not really good in the swim. Second thing they did, which was a huge benefit to me, they didn't count transition times from swim to bike and bike to run. Now, why is that important? Try and put your socks on with one hand, okay? It slows you down. Try and put your clothes on with one hand. It slows you down. Now get really soaking wet, come out of the water, and now try to get dressed with one hand. So I achieved, God gave me, the opportunity to run bike run and qualify for the world championship. What's the world championship? If you were an Ironman, it would be in Kona, Hawaii. If it's a half Ironman, it was in St. George, Utah. So 15 years of racing, 15 years of trying, 15 years I finally get in, I get qualified and we're gonna to go to St. George, Utah, only I have to swim. Now swimming is okay if I get to wear a big wetsuit because it's like a big floaty and it keeps you above the water and I can swim very well. They took away the wetsuit because the water was too warm. I was like, oh, it'll be okay. But about a month before the race, I came down positive with COVID. I was vaccinated, but COVID hit me hard for about three or four days. As an athlete, it takes away almost all of your cardio. So I was going into the race, I wanted desperately to do well in and complete to get the medal. So I take off in the swim, the race starts, 
This was in just in September. This is just less than a month ago. And I take off in the swim and I look glorious for about 10 yards. And then my lungs lock up, my heart takes off and all the COVID symptoms are there. And I'm thinking, I'm gonna drown. I am in a group of people. There are a thousand people beating me on the head, I'm gonna drown. And then I thought, mm, God has something special for me and it's not going to be to drown in St. George, Utah. So I continue the race. I turn over on my back, I try to breathe, I try to swim, I try to breathe, I try to do anything I can to breathe. There are kayak people there that you can hold on to. Everything I'm doing is to force my willpower to get through this swim. And I'm watching my time and I'm watching my time and there's a cutoff. You only have so much time. I got to the end of the swim and there was my buddy Dave. And I was late by a large amount, 10 seconds. So I realized I could either quit or continue the race because there was nobody there who was going to take me out of the race. I was just simply disqualified. My time would not count. But I knew if I finished the bike and the run, I would cross the finish line and get the medal. So what is it that drives us at the point when our character matters? So I reached down inside and I biked and I ran and I finished the race and I got the medal. And I tell you that because in this room, we are a group of people faced with challenges. And they're not all our own. There are students, there are businesses, there are people, and we have to be able to reach inside and maintain our character, our ethics, our belief system so that that carries forward. And what you see here today among the Orban and Prestige and the people that are here to help you is that same character, that same ethics, that same quality of person is there. So what did I learn in 10 seconds? I learned you have to dream, you have hope, you have faith, faith in God, faith in yourself. And then you set a goal. After the goal comes the fear. Fear is what starts you to get to the end of your comfort zone. Zig Ziglar had an acronym for fear. He said, fear can either be forget everything and run or face everything and rise. So fear is what keeps us from starting. Fear keeps us away from our comfort zone. After fear, we start. After we start, we fail. Then we restart. I'm on seven, seven things. Dream, hope, faith, goals, fear, start, fail, restart. Nine, success, 10, gratitude. That's the 10 things I learned in 10 seconds. Thank you.